Elite Facts presents Seven Odd and Painful Deaths from History. Seven. Aeschylus. Ancient Greece is famous for a number of things, one of those being the invention of the play and the foundations of theater. Aeschylus was the Greek playwright who often described as the father of tragedy, but the way he died was a bit less of a tragedy and a bit more cartoonish. When visiting Jela in Sicily, death struck him from above in the form of a tortoise. That's right, Aeschylus was killed when a tortoise fell from the sky and landed straight on his head with enough force to kill the poor playwright. Perhaps you're wondering how this came to be that a tortoise fell on his noggin. Well, tortoises are preyed upon by eagles, and while they are very strong birds, they are unable to break a tortoise's shell with their beak and claws alone. So to get at all the juicy bits of a tortoise, eagles carry the creatures up into the air and drop them on rocks to crack open the shells. Aeschylus was outside, milling about in the sunshine, when a hungry eagle mistook his bald head for a good hard rock on which to crack open a tortoise. The tortoise shell was not the only thing cracked afterwards, and the playwright was very much dead. Talk about a splitting headache. Roman historian Pliny the Elder added a layer of irony to Aeschylus' death, writing that Aeschylus was specifically staying outside in the open in the hopes of avoiding the fulfillment of a prophecy that said he'd be killed by a falling object. 6. Chrysippus Ever laughed so hard you thought you were going to die? Well, for Chrysippus, an ancient Greek philosopher, a drunken donkey eating figs was apparently just too damn funny. Chrysippus was a philosopher of the Stoic school and is credited with not only developing the Stoic philosophy but also with spreading Stoicism across the Greco-Roman world. He believed strongly in the machinations of fate and that even events that seemed accidental always had some hidden cause. Certain elements of fate must have been very well hidden from him when he attended a drunken party with his donkey. What exactly the donkey was meant to be doing at this party is not known, but what is known is that the donkey got drunk and someone decided to feed it a bowl of figs. Upon seeing the donkey eat the figs and drunk on undiluted wine, Chrysippus is said to have declared, quote, Now give the donkey a drink of pure wine to wash down the figs. Perhaps the joke was something to do with decadence or just how stupid the donkey looked eating figs, but Chrysippus apparently found the whole thing so funny that he died in a fit of laughter. For a man who was all about not letting passion dictate reason, a donkey eating figs was just too much. Chrysippus was lucky they didn't have YouTube in ancient Greece. The sheer amount of funny cat videos would likely be enough to kill him several times over. 5. Sigurd the Mighty Sigurd Eysteinsson, or Sigurd the Mighty, was the second Jarl or Earl of the islands of Orkney, north of Scotland. Being very much the stereotypical Viking chief, Sigurd was all about warring and conquest, and conquered most of what is now northeast Scotland. Being a Norse warrior, he also enjoyed his spoils of war and trophies of victories, but he suffered a fatal issue with one trophy when it quite literally bit back. During his conquest of northern Scotland, Sigurd the Mighty made quite the enemy of a local Pictish chieftain called Maelbrag of Moray. The two warriors decided to settle their differences once and for all and agreed to a 40-man per side battle to the death. Sigurd cheated Maelbrag and brought 80 men to the fight. Maelbrag declared that every one of his men should kill at least one of Sigurd's before they themselves die. Sigurd won the fight with ease, and it seems that his dishonorable deception did not go unpunished. Sigurd beheaded the corpse of the fallen male and claimed his severed head as a trophy, then tied the head to the saddle of his horse and rode off victorious. Male was noted as having been bucktooth, and as Sigurd rode off, the motion of the horse caused Male's severed head to bite Sigurd in the leg. The wound caused by the bite became infected, and Sigurd died of the infection not long after. 4. President Félix Faure of France As politicians go, Félix Faure was quite normal by 19th century standards. He wore a well-tailored suit and had a fine gentlemanly mustache. He was the president of France from 1895 until 1899, when he died in office. He was considered to be a fairly bland politician, concerned with building diplomatic relationships with Russia and granting amnesty to anarchists. In fact, he only got the job of president because after the sudden resignation of the previous president, 
Felix was the most inoffensive candidate for the job. His most exciting accomplishments included being shipwrecked for 60 days and once telling the French automotive industry that, quote, your cars are ugly and they smell bad. Besides this, he was a picture of Bland, right up until he literally died in office and the curtain of Bland was pulled back in an explosive reveal to the world. You may be aware that the French euphemism for an orgasm is la petite mort, or the little death. Well, President Félix Faure died in his office at the Elysee Palace, having suffered a grand mort brought on by the tender trouser kiss of his mistress, Marguerite Steinheil. It came out very quickly that the mundane president had been having a very saucy affair and that he had suffered a type of stroke at the climax of some very intense fellatio. The French press treated the untimely death of their president with about as much sensitivity as you'd expect, naming his mistress La Pompe Funebar, a French pun about her role in delivering the president a fatal <clears throat> blow to his career. 3. Arias they say that when you get old, you should never trust a fart. Apparently, if you're also accused of heresy, you should absolutely never ever trust a fart. Once Emperor Constantine of Rome decided that Christianity was going to be the religion of his empire, the fragmented Christian church was told that it had to come together and unite under one doctrine. One significant presbyter who became involved in the ensuing debate was Arius, a priest from Alexandria in Egypt. He had his followers, but his Christian doctrine, which emphasized the importance of the Father over the Son in the Holy Trinity, proved to be very controversial. Arius had pointed out, perhaps quite logically, that in the time before Jesus was born, the Son aspect of the Trinity probably didn't exist. For this, Arius was branded a heretic by many of his contemporaries for advocating this belief in early Roman Christianity. Arius was due to lecture on his doctrine to an assembled crowd in Constantinople when he suffered one of the nastiest deaths imaginable. There's no way to put this delicately, but accounts say that a faintness came over him, and together with the evacuations, his bowels protruded, followed by a copious hemorrhage and the descent of the smaller intestines. So, yes, in not so many words, this poor priest farted too hard and violently pooped out his lower organs and died. 2. King Herod the Great King Herod the Great was the appointed king of the Roman province of Judea in 37 BC, and he has a somewhat mixed reputation as a ruler. He oversaw many great public works and created an aristocracy from practically nothing, but he also earned a bit of a rep as a tyrant, especially after the whole massacre of the innocents he ordered. Yes, he is that King Herod. The one from the Nativity story who ordered the deaths of every newborn in Judea in an effort to kill the baby Jesus. Trying to kill the baby Jesus and slaughtering a bunch of mewling babes in the process apparently didn't go down well with God, because Herod suffered a leg-crossingly painful death. Having suffered from paranoia and depression all of his life, Herod is said to have been driven to suicide by a combination of kidney disease and something identified as Fortii gangrene. This is otherwise known as, brace yourselves guys, gangrene of the penis. Having investigated Herod's case, modern science has struggled to find a clear cause of Herod's wood rot. Without any surefire explanation, many just accept that it was an appropriate fate to befall the baby-murdering king, act of God, karma, or otherwise. 1. Humphrey de Boon Knights were well armored for battle, and they were very hard to kill because of this. However, a well-placed thrust where a knight lacked armor could end a knight's days rather quickly, as was the case with Humphrey de Boon, whose demise at the Battle of Boroughbridge probably made him the butt of a few jokes. Humphrey was the fourth Earl of Herefordshire and was from a powerful noble family from near the border with Wales. He had a rather successful military career for a late 12th century noble. He earned a reputation for himself at knights tournaments, even leaving his post on campaign to fight in one. He was named Lord High Constable of England and fought many a battle around the Scottish border, including at Bannockburn. Humphrey met a most painful end when he led an attempt to storm the wooden bridge central to the fight at the Battle of Borough Bridge in Yorkshire. A cunning enemy pikeman was underneath the bridge when he noticed Humphrey fighting above him. Chronicles have it in gory detail that the pikeman then thrust his pike up through the planks of the bridge and straight up into Humphrey's anus, twisting the head of the polearm around in his intestines. 
Ouch! Humphrey's screams were so intense that they sent panic through the ranks of his men and halted the advance. Quite the ignoble end for such a successful warrior, but proof that pikemen were quite the pain in the ass. Don't forget to like us and subscribe for more Elite Facts.